everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucy and in today's video we are filming a big spring clean of my bookshelves and a huge unhaul. So it is Saturday afternoon, it feels like spring, my magnolia tree is blooming outside and even though this weekend is a bit of a cooler weekend here in London, spring is definitely here and it is springing and I'm very very excited for this season. So at the start of every spring on my channel I usually will do a spring cleaning of my bookshelves. Just fine for the lighter evenings and the warmer weather, it just calls to just get rid of all the stuff that I've been hoarding, all the books I've been hoarding over autumn and winter and let me tell you it is a lot. Like my bookshelves you probably can't see, maybe you can, a little bit of a state. So we are going to rectify this today. Now, how I usually format these videos, because I've done this video for four years now, I will link the other ones down below in the description bar if you want to see them, but I love filming these videos because it just gives me a sense of calm once it's done. And it's become a bit of a kind of like calling card for my channel that a spring clean of my bookshelves will be coming every spring. So we are first going to do a little bit of a bookshelf tour so I can just tell you what we are dealing with here. I only have two main bookshelves in this living room. This is because I live in a small London flat and I don't have ample bookshelf space, sadly. But we are gonna get all the books off these shelves work out which books to unhaul and then reorganize my bookshelves and I'm very very excited to see the finished result. So let's get cracking shall we? Grab yourself a warm coffee or a tea, whatever you feel most comfortable with. And let's get cracking on this very long video. But this is what we are dealing with. So these are my main two bookshelves and then I have this little mini shelf over here of which this has happened. So we need to sort this out because I'm not really sure what's happening here but it is an absolute state and honestly we've got piles of books here, we've got piles of books here and as I said there is just a lot of books all over the shop. And genuinely like I always let my bookshelves build up like this and I just feel like we need to sort out what is no longer serving us in terms of the reading tastes, what books I just want to get rid of and I really just feel like the piles of books like on the actual shelves like these are just, it's not a vibe. So it's time to take all of the books off the bookshelves and then I think we need to work out which ones to unhaul. So what we have here is all the books that don't fit on this bookshelf and this is what I need to sort through so I think it's time to do the unhaul section first actually and then we'll reorganize. I usually sell my books so I'll sell finished copies and I usually sell them through a website called We Buy Books. I don't usually sell them on my social channels or on Vinted or anything. I just find that it's easier for me to just sell them through an organized website if that makes sense and then for proof copies because obviously I work in publishing so I get a lot of proof copies and obviously publishers send me proof copies for this YouTube channel I just recycle them because you can't resell proofs so they just go in the recycling bin you know or I'll give them to people sometimes I'll leave them outside my house sounds a little bit sketchy but they usually go quite quickly so let's get on with the unhaul unhold portion of this video and I'm literally sat surrounded by books and yeah I think we better get going because I need to box all these up, recycle what I need to and there's a lot of books here. I think probably not as many actually as I wanted to unhaul but I just can't bring myself to like properly 
be really cutthroat. So these are just the obvious ones that I was like, you know what, no, I'm not going to keep these. So kicking off, It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is a contemporary romance book. I didn't love this and there are a lot of huge fans of this author and of this like book and I just sadly it didn't really hit for me. I'm not a huge fan of contemporary romances anyway but I did want to try it to see what I thought. Sadly not one for me. The next one is a proof copy. This is The Dance Tree by Kieran Mulwood Hargrave. I have already read this one, so I am going to be passing it on or recycling just because I don't really kind of plan on rereading this. I really did enjoy it, but I just think like, I don't need to keep it on my shelf if I've already read this one. So this is gonna go to another home. Similarly, a proof copy of Twin Crowns by Katie Weber and Catherine Doyle. And I absolutely love this book, but Again, this is a proof copy. It is a stunning proof copy, can I just say. But I have already read this and it is a proof copy. So this is gonna go to the recycling, I think. Similarly, another proof copy, but this time I haven't read this. This is The Song That Moves the Sun by Anna Bright. And I was really excited about this when it arrived. This is published by Harper Teen. And this is YA, and I think like I'm kind of a little bit over YA fantasies. So I think this one might have to go in the recycling pile. I'm just kind of not like dying to read this book. And I think that's probably a sign that I should get rid. This is a finished copy, not a proof, but I am gonna get rid of One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I've read this, I really loved it. I just don't plan on rereading. So I feel like it has to go on the pile and we have to say goodbye to One Last Stop. Now this is a proof copy of I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Katie McQuiston. I'm actually deciding to unhaul most of the Katie McQuiston books I do have. I think it's just the contemporary settings I am just not excited about anymore. I haven't read this book. This is a YA book, YA romance, and I'm really grateful to have received this proof by Macmillan, but I just think I'm probably not gonna read this, so this is going away. The next book is The Hedge Witch by Carrie Thomas. Now this is a beautiful little novella and I actually picked this up from work. This is basically a novella in the Threadneedle world. Even though I really wanted to read Threadneedle, I kind of picked this book up because we were doing like a giveaway at work at HopCollins where I used to work and this was on the kind of pile and I was like sure I'll like start reading Threadneedle and get into that world. I've obviously not read Threadneedle, so I think it's pointless me keeping this. So this is gonna go to a better home. Some other books I'm gonna get rid of are these Mills and Boone books. So these are all historical romance. So we have The Highlander and The Wallflower. We have Her Legendary Highlander and How to Start a Scandal. Now, this was really when I was in my like historical romance phase. I usually love historical romance. As you all know, I'm a huge Regency romance fan. And I did actually read a legendary Highlander. I didn't love this book, I must say. And so I don't really have any desire to read these other books. I just feel like usually I read historical romance on my Kindle. Otherwise, I wouldn't really pick up a physical copy for historical romance, so I think these are going as well. The next one is another proof copy. This is a proof copy of Fair Rosaline by Natasha Solomons. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling, and I just don't think I'm going to read this. I think there's too many other books that I have on my shelves that I would pick up before this, so I am going to sadly say goodbye and get rid of my proof copy. Another proof copy I'm probably gonna get rid of. This was kind of sent to me. This is, by the way, Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. So obviously a brand new book, and this was only published in February, I wanna say. Um, this was kind of sent to me without me requesting it, and usually when that happens, like I either jump at the proof and get really excited, or I'm kind of a bit like, mm. I think it's because, again, it's not it's not fantasy, it's not really romance, and those are the genres that I'm really reading right now. Contemporary books just don't really do it the same way for me. I think this is actually set in a college, and it's all about class and money, so maybe this would be really good, but I'm gonna give it to someone else. I hope they enjoy it. The next book I'm gonna get rid of is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I have read this book. I read it when I went to Japan and this is a tiny, tiny short book and it was so much fun. It's basically about a convenience store worker in Japan who's just very different from what society expects her to be. 
and it's very quirky it's very funny but also there's like kind of a darker kind of hidden meaning beneath it all and really looks at Japanese culture and society so I have read this I probably wouldn't reread it because it's just so short and also you know I kind of have read it once so I am gonna sell this one and hopefully it goes to a better home the next one is a very very gorgeous proof and this is Tom Cruise the new life now this was sent to me a few years back and this has been getting like rave reviews I think it was like many newspapers picks of like the best debut novel of last year I just don't have any like massive desire to read this book the proof is really really cool but yeah I think it just has to go I'm not going to read it anytime soon the next book I'm unholding is This Woven Kingdom by Tara Maffey I read this book and I rated it three stars and I was so underwhelmed by this book and I even splashed out on the Waterstones Sprayed Edge edition and I still was very disappointed so yeah I think this can go to a better home and hopefully there'll be someone out there who really enjoys this book I just sadly didn't enjoy it I have no plans to reread next one's an interesting one I got sent this a few years back and I have already read this this is normal people the scripts and this is obviously a script book and I just even though it'd be cool to keep this I need to be really really ruthless so I'm just going to get rid of this I have already read this I was obsessed with the Normal People TV show when it came out and the publishers actually sent this to me I believe so very very grateful to have received this but gonna say goodbye. Next one is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is another book where I splashed out in the Waterstone special edition of this. This is a beautiful book like absolutely stunning but I was just so underwhelmed. This is about like a creepy house that has like an alternate side to it and it's all about kind of like parallel worlds I guess and this is really really med menacing it's very very creepy it definitely reads more like between middle grade and YA it's more like a teen book I would say and I just didn't really connect with this it didn't really click for me so this is gonna go this book that's gonna go is Homebody by Rupi Kaur this is obviously a volume of poetry by Rupi Kaur who did Milk and Honey <sighs> I read this and was like it was okay it didn't really speak to me like as much as i hoped it would so i think i am going to sell this one the next book is a book that has a special place in my heart because this was my first ever sponsored video on youtube and it was for this book which is a thousand nights by ek johnston and this is inspired by a thousand and one nights in the tale of shahrazad so i absolutely adored this book actually and also this beautiful beautiful finished copy like guys look at this book how beautiful is that like stunning but i do know i'm probably not going to be rereading this and it is YA I kind of feel like this is kind of done its time on my bookshelves like I've had this for like 10 years now so I am going to say goodbye to this I really have special memories but I'm sure that someone else can hopefully read this buy it love it and yeah gonna say goodbye to that next up we have Angel Mage by Garth Nix this is a I think this was Garth Nix's like first adult fantasy book I didn't read it and this was kindly sent to me from the publishers but I just never got around to reading it so I do think again this has got to go. Now we have two books in the same kind of universe here and I wonder if like you OG booktube people will remember this. This is Sarah J Mass's Catwoman Soul Stealer and Lee Bardugo's Wonder Woman Warbringer. Like do you remember when like YA authors were doing this kind of like Marvel DC kind of retellings? I think it was DC wasn't it? Not Marvel anyway i bought these so quick this one's even signed by sarah j maz and yeah they have these like gorgeous kind of like little packages they look super super cool i never read these i'm not a superhero fan so why did i buy these like i spent my good hard-earned money on these books and never read either of them so they're gonna go the next one is a hardback proof copy kindly sent to me from sphere this is love on the brain by ali hazelwood this was ali hazelwood's second novel i don't know there's something about contemporary romance again where i'm just a bit like over it and i know i'm not going to read this like i know in my heart of hearts i'm just not going to read it so why am i keeping it on my shelves you know being brutal here goodbye 
The next book is one I have already read. This was The Maidens by Alex McAlades and I liked it. I thought it was good. I am not going to reread this so I'm going to get rid of it. Now this is a historical fiction book. This is The Burning Chambers by Kate Moss and Kate Moss is the author of Labyrinth and that whole series which I really really loved back in the day. I was really excited about this because it's a brand new series and even though I've had this on my bookshelves for like three years I have not read this book. So it is going to go and I just know I'm not going to read it so why am I keeping it on my shelves. Similarly I made a mistake by picking this book up from work when I worked at HarperCollins. This is a proof copy of Heart of the Sun Warrior by Sue Lin Tan. This is actually the second book in a series that I don't even own a copy of book one of. Like why am I keeping this book in the hopes that one day I'm going to buy book one. It's just silly like I did pick this up from work they were giving away as I said like we had like giveaways at work where any old proofs or finished copies we kind of like donated to the rest of the company so I picked this up thinking I'm really gonna start reading the series and I didn't so it's gonna go to a better home. Ah this is the next Casey McQuiston book I'm getting rid of Red White and Royal Blue. I read this I liked it, I didn't love it, so I'm gonna say goodbye. Now, the next book is a proof copy. This is A Restless Truth by Freya Mask. And I haven't read this book. It's kind of like described as Agatha Christie meets kind of like a romance novel. It is a queer romance, so that's kind of why I wanted to read it and see what it was like. But I think it's the second book in the series and I haven't read the first book, which was A Marvelous Light. So I am going to get rid of this one. The next one is a history book that was kindly sent to me from the History Press. And I did really want to read this a few years ago, but I've just never gotten around to reading it. And I just know in my heart that I'm not going to pick this up anytime soon. This is Gloriana Elizabeth I and the Art of Queenship by Siobhan Clark and Linda Collins. So a really kind of short volume and if I had more shelf space I really would keep this book but I don't so I think I need to get rid. Okay so we're down to the final few here. Uh, the next one is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This is like a historical fantasy book. It's a reimagining of the two sisters, an old British folk ballad. I just know I'm not going to read this book like I was so excited for this back in the day when I got sent this beautiful finished copy but I've not read it yet and I don't think I will um, just because there's so many other books to read. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. Okay, the final book I'm gonna get rid of is The Witch and the Tsar and this is by Alessia Salinakova Gilmore. And this is like inspired by Russian folklore, which I kind of wanted like a kind of vibe of The Bear and the Nightingale. And I hope that this book would kind of do it justice. And I just never picked it up. So I don't know if it's actually going to be that kind of like vibe as The Bear and the Nightingale. But do let me know if you've read this book. I just know I'm not going to read this and I would love to keep it on my shelves. But again, there's just not enough space. There's just not enough space. So we're going to get rid of this one. We have finished the very, very big unhaul. I am exhausted already and I've got so many books to like clean up and try to fit on my shelves. So I've dusted and I think I'm fairly happy with how the bookshelves are looking. I just need to add my little decorations, my finishing touches, and then I want to show you the finished product.
Okay, so we've actually lost the light. It's like 5, 6 p.m. outside now. It's taken me hours to do this. Anyway, I wanted to show you guys the finished shelves. As I mentioned, I think I'm fairly happy. The only issue is I have too many books. <laughs> so I need more bookshelves, evidently. But I've tried to unhaul as many as I can. And this is the finished product. And it is a little bit messy. It doesn't really have an order to it but it's the thing that's working for me at the moment. So let's go through the bookshelves. So up here we have some gorgeous hardbacks. Now I have too many hardbacks and I think this is why it's been tr quite tricky to actually organize my bookshelves because I have a high percentage of hardback fantasy books. So I'm really happy with how this looks. I think it's really cute. And if we pan over, these are the Sarah J Maas shelves. They kind of pan over two shelves here but I think this looks okay. I'm not like thrilled about like these, for example, but they're better than having the books just stacked there. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. We've got obviously the new House of Flame and Shadow book there. And these are just some cute pins I've gotten from book boxes over the years. So here we go. This is how this is looking. Pan over here. Again, more hardbacks. I mean, <laughs> I didn't really know what to do. There's no color coordination. Half of these are not even in series order, but we will roll with it. There we have the next shelf down there, which is looking okay apart from this thing. Like the fact that there's so many hardbacks, but then I didn't have enough to really fill this gap. So I put my Danielle L. Johnson books there for the time being. Again, more hardbacks and the bottom one is, yeah, just awkward shaped books. Then panning along, there's a lot of like really great hardbacks here. And a nice kind of like little pink section, which I have had for the past few years, I think. I really like the way the pink section looks. And the bottom two shelves here, which I think look okay. This shelf is my worst nightmare. I do not like it, but these books have had to go somewhere and this is where they've gone. Over here, these are kind of looking a lot tidier now and they look okay. I'm not mad about that. One thing I am mad about though is this. So I've not actually been able to fit these paperbacks anywhere. So I'd prefer to put them out where I can actually see the spines and be able to tell what books I need to read next. And then, because I've had an excess of paperbacks, I have put the rest up here. I mean, I just couldn't fit these in anywhere, but I really do like the way that they're kind of like even-ish. And actually, when you kind of step back a bit, I think they look okay. Like, I'm not too, you know, annoyed about how the bookshelves are looking. The main thing for me is that there are none sticking out. There are none kind of not in a place. So I think this looks okay. So guys, that is it for my bookshelf reorganization, my spring clean. I'm really happy I've got a chance to dust these shelves because let's be honest, it happens like twice a year, but that's fine. As well as my big book on haul, which I think you can tell the difference. Like apart from these guys hanging out, like it looks a lot neater and I'm really, really pleased by the final result. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it's inspired you to do your own bit of spring cleaning. And do let me know what other videos you'd like to see on my channel down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, why not click subscribe? I've got a load of new videos coming your way soon and I hope you all have a lovely week. See you soon. Bye.